Hi, boys and girls. Okay, this is the time we are going to work on our G books. So I hope that you all have your G books in your hands and ready to turn the pages with me. Our three sight words are the first one, I think we already know we've seen that one before. I, say it with me again, I. And our second snap word or sight word is C. Say it with me, C. And our third one is P H E spells the or the. That's as easy as can be. The. So let's say all three and put them together. I see the. Then remember our rule. Always look at the picture first to give you a clue and then finish our sentence. You ready? Now I have a gigantic one that I've already colored. So when you're done reading your G book, remember how we go to the tables and color them? So maybe you can color them and make them colorful and exciting, the colors that you choose. All right, so here we go, my friends. My G book, get your pointer fingers ready. Here we go, page one. I'll give you a second to find page one. Okay, point your finger. Say with me, I see the, look at the picture. What is it? Starts with G, G sound, goat, stop sign. I see the goat, beautiful. Second page, point your finger, I see the, look at the picture, picture clue, g, 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 gate, stop sign, g, g, great job, g, g, girls and boys, okay, point your finger ready, I see the, g, 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 you got it, glasses, stop sign, Okay, next page, point your fingers ready. I see the g, 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 glove, glove, stop sign. G, great job. Our last page always has an extra word in it, so let's see if we can guess it. I see the g, Ghost, stop sign. Now, do you remember when we talked about letter O and we have two O's together? They say oo, like moo or zoo, and there's a B there. What's that ghost gonna say? Boo! Excited, Mark. Great job, boys and girls. All right, you may set your G books down and color them a little bit later. I have a special book I wanna read to you, and this is so cool. I ordered it in the mail and I couldn't find it new, so I got a used version and from Thrift Books, and when I pulled it out, I was so excited to find out that this book belonged to Nikki from 2001, which is 19 years ago. And it says, Dear Nikki, you are my one and only love. Happy Valentine's Day. Love, Marmar. <laughs> So now I have Nikki's book to share with you and I thought that was so cool that I was able to get a used book from Nikki and share it with you and have it be 2020 that we're reading the book that he read when he was a young boy. So it's called The Field Mouse and the Dinosaur Named Sue. Now the Field Mouse um, is at a, a museum in Chicago called the Field Museum. And maybe some of you have been there. Raise your hand if you've been to Chicago before. Maybe some of you have been there. So I will um, start reading, and I think you'll like this story, boys and girls. It's um, by Jan Wall, and the pictures are by Bob Doucette. So there's our actual um, dinosaur. Hopefully you can tell me which one that is. Or 
Early one morning, Field Mouse heard strange noises outside his burrow. Some loud, some soft. Scritch, scratch, scritch, chip, and bang. His house had a roof made of an old bone. Field Mouse peered into the hot day. People with shovels, scrapers, and pick, picks dug into the bluff above. Carefully, slowly. Oh my, cried a young woman. Look at this beautiful thing. And she showed the others a bone like his roof. Old bones lay all over the place. They were no good for chewing on. In fact, they were like rock. In fact, they were rock. Remember yesterday we talked about what a fossil is? These would be fossils. I don't think the mouse knows quite how important they are. That day and the next and the next and the next, diggers kept digging. Field Mouse had to see what was happening. In the afternoon, he wished to take a nap. He scurried back to the home he had known his whole life. When he got there, he saw a terrible sight. His burrow was torn open. The roof was gone. They took my bone away. Now I must find it, he said. Packing boxes lay there, here and there, and old, old bones were wrapped in burlap and placed gently in wooden boxes. A worker put a cheese sandwich down on the edge of a box. The cheese sandwich fell <laughs> into the box. Field Mouse thought his bone might just be in that box too, so he jumped in. He sniffed and he poked, but he could not find his roof. Suddenly, a lid was put on the box. It grew black as pitch. The box was lifted onto a truck and the truck drove off. At first, Field Mouse lay on the sandwich. His stomach rumbled from hunger. It kept him awake. The cheese smelled wonderful. Well, he decided, I'll try eating this. It was wonderful, but he still missed his home. The box was taken to a place called Chicago, where they had a huge building, and the building was called the Field Museum. And this is Sue. Is there dinosaur there named Sue? And we'll find out about that. The box was um, put on a shelf in a cool place in a very special room. Now, that box is going to be opened, I think. One morning, the lid on the box was opened. Field Mouse jumped out. Do you see him? On tables lay more bits of pieces of old bones, some large, some tiny. A man was studying them and didn't see him. Field Mouse looked and looked for his roof. He flicked his tail and ran when he heard noises. Sue mumble mumble said one, Sue mumble mumble said another. What is Sue, wondered the mouse. He squeezed through an opening in the wall and out of the room. Hmm. What is Sue? And I see Sue written here. Sue is on the front of the museum. Sue coming soon. What is Sue? Hmm. Is that Sue? Hmm. Is that Sue? He scampered up onto a ledge, searching for his bone. He saw something so tall it reached to the sky of the hall. It was Field Mouse's first dinosaur. It had no skin or fur. Down below him, people gazed at the critter. They were small as insects. He grew dizzy and felt lost. Field Mouse hid until nighttime. Then he crawled up to a window beyond many lights of the city twinkled. Far off was a lake. It made him thirsty. He found water in a plastic cup someone had left on the floor. He tipped it over and he drank. When visitors were gone from the museum, Field Mouse was free to run. He saw colors through another glass window. He didn't know it, but he was looking at Chicago as it was 410 million years ago. There were plants, corals, snails, and shells. He scratched to get in. Field Mouse soon grew tired and pushed himself into a small place in the wall. There it was, dark, and he could close his eyes and remember home. When he woke, he saw a man polishing the floor with a machine that whirred loudly and spun. What do you think that machine is, my friends? Maybe a vacuum? Field Mouse almost got pulled into it. He wiggled and jumped. He raced down the length of the hall and passed two elephants. He ran and ran until his legs couldn't go anymore, and then he collapsed in a corner and he fell asleep. In daytime, 
If no visitors were near, field mouse crawled up and peered into a special place where people seemed very busy. They scraped at bones, big and little, or poured plaster on others. They were careful as the diggers who found the bones. They looked odd because they wore masks. Dust flew into the air as they took tiny stones away from the old bones. There was a lot to explore. Every room was different, and he found more people working on bones. Maybe one bone was his roof. He kept searching. Mostly, Field Mouse hid behind walls. It was best to come out only at night. He learned to turn to tunnel from one room into another, squeezing into the tiniest crack. One day, he entered a great high room with plants big as trees, giant dragonflies big as birds. This was Chicago 300 million years ago. He sniffed and sniffed. Nothing was real, nothing to nibble on. He missed his home. Field Mouse felt he would never find his bone. There were so many strange creatures all around him. He liked to look at Demetrodon. The eyes were empty holes but seemed to stare at him. He began to explore the Apatosaurus. Its tail alone was 30 feet. The critters became his friends. They had so many bones. Do you see him up here? Field Mouse thought Triceratops was scary. Did these critters have fur like him? Were they lizards? Field Mouse found it was fun to climb up their backs and slide down to the floor. He took naps where he could, but wished he had a cozy spot of his own. Okay, there's that name Sue again. One day, to his surprise, the giant critter in the great hall was gone. Men and women kept going back and forth. They were putting up something to keep the crowds away. Field Mouse still had no, not found a home. To cheer himself up, he went to the cafe. He found a scrap of a tasty, excellent cake. He was hearing again, Sue this, Sue that. His ears rang with, Sue, 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 Sue. What was it? Then one morning, there it was, all put together, the Sue they talked about, the biggest T-Rex in the whole wide world. She was 67 million years ago. Of course he didn't know that. A lot of people stood in front admiring her. She had peculiar short stubby arms. Poor thing, thought Field Mouse. How did she ever pick up a piece of cheese? Remember those little feet that we put up um, when we do our Tyrannosaurus Rex song? Later that night, the hall lay empty except for Sue and Field Mouse. He walked up to each foot. He climbed on her toes and crawled up a leg. Slowly he climbed up searching. In coming down, he stopped in the middle of the other foot. Ha! Ah, guess what, my friends? Does anybody know what it is? <laughs> what was Field Mouse searching for? Hmm, do you remember in the beginning of the story? His bone! His very own bone! He chattered to Sue. She just kept silent. She's just a skeleton, right? Under his bone, it was dark and cool and safe, a fine place for a secret nest. He made it with bits of paper, smooth and round. Maybe Sue had been a terrible angry hunter one time, crashing through forests of tall magnolia or oak, oak trees. But now she was quiet and gentle. Field Mouse was sure she was singing a soft song. Under the foot, he dreamed a happy dream. He was home. So that is the end of our story, but boys and girls, there is a true story about Sue, and we see a fossil, and the paleontologist that dug up all of her bones, and it says, found in dry rolling hills of South Dakota, Sue was captured, has captured the imagination of people the world over, declared the largest and most complete Tyrannosaurus rex ever found. Sue's immense size and near perfect condition make her nothing less than the find of the century. So Sue is Tyrannosaurus rex, the biggest in the world, put together by paleontologists at the Field Museum in Chicago, Illinois. That's the end of our story, my friends. I'll see you on Monday and be looking for your white packet in the mail. There'll be a few little surprises in it again. And um, have a great weekend and be watching for teacher Christy and her cool dinosaur project.